I have this older MTH Rail King caboose and when I got it out of the box both the bulbs were burned out. Now, I ordered some and they were um, Lionel 18 volt 1456-300 large globe probably bulbs similar to uh, something from pre-war. But anyway, I thought what I would do is this would be a great uh, piece to play around with replacing those with an LED circuit. Disregard this over here. That's an Arduino. That's I just use this breadboard to screw around with some electronics. And this stuff over here doesn't really go with it anyway. But anyway, what... Let's see. I guess if I get some light on it here, generally I'm going to come in and go through this little chip, this bridge rectifier, to turn the AC into DC. And then uh, because I run MTH, I'm going to run through this little choke here, which will help, you know, not screw up the signal. I have one of these little poly fuse, resettable fuses. I'm going to put it in there, but I'm not sure. It'll probably just keep the wire from burning up if uh, the wires from burning up if it stays shorted on the track. And then I have my four LEDs as seen here. And a resistor. I'm just going to put one resistor in series instead of doing one to each. Because I don't care if, if the LEDs are perfectly balanced as far as light output. It's going to be inside the shell anyway. And I got a big 22. Um, uh, oh, microfarad, <laughs> 2200 microfarad cap, so that um, actually when you turn the power off to it, they just dim down for about 30 seconds, and that'll also help going over bad spots in the track so it won't flicker. Okay, so maybe something like this. I cut a piece of fish paper, and I lined up my components the four LEDs spaced evenly, the bridge rectifier and the choke, the resistor, um, and then a pot so I can adjust the brightness and the big capacitor. And then maybe I can fit it up in here and hook it to either side with some glue and then put like a spacer behind it to hold it away from the inside of the shell. Now, <clears throat> this is not my idea. I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, got my iPad here. But on um, JC Studios, John over there, and Dale H., who we all know from the O-Gage Forum, he posted this back in 2010. Shows the circuit and pictures of everything. So I'm just going to follow this and see how it, how it goes. Um, I just made a copy of it and stuck it up here with a magnet to my work light so that I can see what's going on. So get the uh, soldering iron fired up, start poking some holes in the fish paper, laying it out and see how it goes. Okay, here we are. So far, got the components pushed through the fish paper. Got my four LEDs, my cap, my bridge rectifier, my choke for DCS, my pot for adjusting the brightness, and my resistor for my LEDs. Okay, the moment of truth. Took me about an hour. Um, this is the back side of my wiring. Mark some things here. And then the front, well, upside down from what you guys saw before. There we go. There's the cap on the right and the LEDs and everything. So, as I said, moment of truth. Uh, I got my... I hooked it up back here to my trusty Lionel crap transformer. So, let's see what happens. Turn this baby up. Oh! We have light. Oh, cool. We got four lights. Now I got to crank the whole way up to 18 volts. It's not really bright. Oh, <laughs> I know. How am I going to do this? I bet I have the uh, pot turned down. Yeah, 
Eh, that should be bright enough. Cool. All right, so now I gotta figure out how to fit it inside the shell and wire it up, but that part works. Excellent. Okay, I'm back. One more thing I wanted to show you because it'll be hard to see once it's inside the caboose, but this cap is a 2200 microfarad, so it should hold pretty well. So I'm gonna turn this power off if you can see back here. Turn, turn, turn. All right, power's off. But even at full power on those, see there's like a slow fade as the cap drains. So that should also help going over spots in the track where it would normally flicker with the other bulbs. That'll even it out. Nice. Okay, we'll try it the old way first before the conversion with the two 18 volt bulbs in. Just to get a general idea how it looks. Okay, so we'll combine some nice work with some not so nice work. Um, putting it in here wasn't the easiest thing. I tried to do super glue on the ends and it's pretty cold down here in the basement and I had to use some accelerant accelerator so that wasn't so good. I put a piece of tape on it. I think it'll stay. Next time if I was doing this in production mode I'd use maybe some caulk or some type of epoxy or something. The problem with all this stuff for me is <laughs> I use them once every six to nine months or something like that. I don't do a lot of this stuff down here. So any adhesives, I mean, look at all the stuff I have back here. It's brand new because what I'll do is I'll open it up and use it for one or two projects. And then it's hard as a rock inside there. It's very expensive to keep buying glues. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, and the fish paper was curled too when I bought it. So I would try to flatten that out nicer so it didn't put so much pressure on the sides there and then uh, come up with another way to hold that down. But that worked out okay. Um, and then I routed the wires up and along here and then just came down. I removed the uh, sockets. Here's the sockets from the old bulbs. I removed them because one of them, I believe, was sitting here, actually would have hit this cap when you put the shell back on. And there's no point to them anyway. And then I put a uh, crimp connector on here to ground and then came down on both the power trucks. I'm sure this is not UL approved here, but I soldered it and taped it up. So, all right, I'm gonna go to the track and see if it works. Well, I can't believe it, but after all that, <clears throat> it doesn't work. It worked on the bench. And then I hooked it up to the wiring I just showed you. Turn this on, it doesn't work anymore. So I don't know if I burn up a component or what, but man, I'm gonna have to rip this back out of here, I guess, and look at the wiring underneath it now that I finally got it glued in there. Hmm. Gonna take a look at this. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna play with it and I'll be back. Well, we're going to have quite a mess to clean up now, if I can figure it out. Um, I was able to pull this entire thing out without having to, you know, undo my glue here. So that's cool. Um, I kept cutting stuff off and trying to get back as far as I could to apply the voltage to see if it would work. And the very last thing I did was cut off this uh, ring terminal. Which is ridiculous because you can even see the wire in there, the uh, copper wire inside the connector. I've never seen a bad uh, crimp connector before. But I tried everything and the only thing I did was cut this off and then hook the black wire right to there without that and the lights came on. So, I don't know, i um, going to go back through here and see if I can repair what I ripped apart. I thought maybe, you know, I screwed something up with the electronics or blew out the bridge rectifier or something like that. 
it was, I think it was this. So, here we go. Repair mode. Okay, let's give it another go here. I put a new uh, crimp connector on here, and these I tied together. I soldered them and put a pigtail on it. <laughs> I almost, uh, I almost used this. But I figured since I was doing ghetto wiring, I was going to put this uh, this little wire nut on. You have to go back a couple years following me to know where this is from. This is the tiny little wire nut um, that was on my Lionel ES44AC. Actually, one of my four ES44s in the BNSF that I really liked and I really wanted and I had to keep sending them back and Lionel kept sending me other ones and this wire connector had almost nine ground wires underneath it. And they were trying to fit it, fit that little, it was just sitting on there, it was just capped on there, it was ridiculous. That was back before I was doing videos, I did a blog post on it, it's still out there. Anyway, I was thinking it was cool, I thought it would be appropriate to use this ghetto, with my ghetto wiring, use this wire connector from the Lionel thing, but I didn't. All right, bottom line, let's uh, power it up and see if it works. Yeah. Now, as long as I left enough slack in the... Uh, you know, the wire here, I, I didn't have a lot, but as long as I left enough so that the trucks can go around the curve, I think I'm okay. I'll push it back down in here. All right, let me button it back up and see what happens. By the way, I just turned the power off and uh, the capacitor is slowly draining, so that's pretty cool. Okay, guys, I'm back. Oh, the project that won't end. Remember the pigtail? Yeah, so I moved it around and tried to put the shell back on and it, it broke right off. The solder joint and everything broke right off. This is like the project that won't end. Um, you know how when the cartoon guy's working on something and he keeps doing that and then he gets all pissed and he starts like throwing everything around him? Ah! Okay, well I didn't do that, but you know, it's very frustrating. I was getting close. Anyway, because now I had to cut that off, and then all these wires, all three of these wires were too short. So I ended up, I, I did it the right way. I mean, I went back and I put some shrink tubing on and extended the wires up, and I put a wire nut on them. So I'm gonna try to put it back together for like the sixth time. So maybe we can bring this project to an end tonight before it, you know, it's midnight. Okay, so here he is completed with track power on. Pretty nice. Yeah, depending on the angle you're at. I mean, you can see the you can see the wire nut in there and the wires. Sure. Um, hmm. Tell me what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over and cut the lights since it's night and see what it looks like. Okay, so here it is with a little ambient light on in the room, getting some reflection, but. Now let me go full blackout. Okay, taking pictures in the dark. Great. I don't know how well you can see it. I mean, you'll see the light, but that's in full blackout in the basement here. So overall, you know, it was a challenge, but now that I understand it, it, you know, wasn't too bad for the first time through. And that's what it's all about, right? Is learning stuff. Well, at least for me, playing with the electronics, learning some skills along the way, and having some fun doing it. So I hope this inspires you to do some of these projects. And if you would have any questions, ask them below or comment. I would really appreciate it. I'm not an expert in this, and I did point out at some point where this information came from, but I thought, you know, this was a good cheap caboose I could learn on and try. So to me, that's what it's all about. All right. Talk to you guys later.